And good evening. I'm Erin Burnett. Out front tonight, Trump's lawyers talking. CNN con significant development. Obviously, Cipollone and Philbin know a lot. They were Trump's point men for dealing with the National Archives. Investigators, of course, asked questions about how 15 boxes of materials ended up at Mar-a-Lago even after, even after they said they returned everything. Team Trump did. According to the New York Times, Philbin had been, according to the New York Times, and I quoted this several advisors, several advisors uh, who know the president, said Trump told them uh, about the documents, quote, it's not theirs, it's mine. Talking about the National Archives, does he have any claim to intelligence that he would have received, that it becomes his? He has returned them. So the fact that he's saying this is the reason I'm not is no excuse in the law, let's put it that way. So, Bill, as I said, you broke the news that an informer tipped off someone on, on the legal team in mm -hmm. some way. Now, we don't know exactly who that is, but obviously that's significant. His legal team was the one uh, signing the letter saying, we've returned everything that you asked for, mm -hmm. which, of course, was, was false. Um, we know Cipollone and Philbin Phil, mm -hmm. have been interviewed. Mm -hmm. Okay, now they, um, how crucial are they? Well, it's a, uh, coordinating with the National Archives to make sure that things that should have gone to the archives, part of the presidential records, actually made it there. Right. And so between investigators and the archives, really, mm -hmm. and uh, and the Trump, we don't, again, what's really important for us to underscore, we don't know what was said, but we do know that all the way back in April, in the spring, it was two legal officials inside the Trump White House. So, Ryan, when you look at what you know right now, what Dan is talking about, this timeline, what was returned and what wasn't, the fact that there were multiple people who knew that things were not returned, even though things... The DOJ of a criminal case against Trump. I think they absolutely do. In fact, we know about, in terms of what he, Donald Trump himself decided to do with, the, these, with these documents and the ways in which he kept them from the government. And so, Bill... Let me ask you, from, from your understanding, and Anna, that uh, when they, they filed to prevent, they, they, the DOJ doesn't want us to see the underlying argument that they presented to a judge, right. that they said that because this could harm other investigations, exactly. high profile as well. So there was an indication that there was the other things, but they, but they didn't go farther than that. Uh, Evan was talking about the passport news, mm -hmm. right? That they took the passports, then they returned them. Trump mm -hmm. was saying they were stolen. Okay, putting that brouhaha aside, mm -hmm. you've been talking to your sources. How significant is the passport news? I mean, just even the fact that they took them in the first place yeah. when obviously they they shouldn't have. Well, there's reality, and then there's the reality that Trump has been trying to, who probably should have figured out that these passports were in one of the boxes that they were supposed to take. Yeah. They didn't then, but they did as soon as they got it back to the field. Possibly can, and he exploited it. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, is, is unfortunate when it comes to the narrative, but not so much when it comes to the real legal case. So the real substance of all of it. All right, thank you all very much, all three. So now, 90 minutes left in those polls in Wyoming. Let's go out front now to our senior political analyst, Nia Malika Henderson. A significant night when you think about it and the importance for the country. Chris, what are you looking at in Liz Cheney's race? Well, I'm not looking for her to win. Uh, as John pointed out, that, I mean, miracles do happen, but it would literally be a political miracle for her to win. So Trump, but what is she going to say about her role in that army uh, trying to oppose Donald Trump in 2023 and 4? Uh, how much is her role in it? So, Nia, you know, Liz Cheney has never blanched at calling Trump to account. Never. Right. And, right, and in this, she has been on a lonely island mm -hmm. many, many times. Uh, just listen to her. I mean, yeah, she's very black and white about it. You cannot be both those things at once. I mean, and tonight, that is the choice, right? It is Trump or Cheney. And listen, she must have known uh, what this would mean for her political future, to stand up against Donald Trump, to never waive a committee in so many ways. She is, she's yeah. used that committee to try to uh, end up listening to her tonight and beyond tonight. What more national level, I think that's the question that you talk about against him. Uh, and we'll see if she is able to... Who would support that? Oh, they would love that. Right. right. Is I mean, the market share right. inside in the, the Republican party. nominating electorate for right. the would think that there's a clearer path to the Republican presidential uh, here in this Wyoming Republican electorate? I get how conservative Wyoming is. I, it just seems to me she want to play. If it's not seriously means uh, being a spoiler, if that means uh, helping to channel that money into some super the January sixth committee, that is going to be a loss. Right. Yep. But, yeah, it's a big platform yeah. for her. She'll likely, I imagine, she'll probably get a uh, speaking about issues uh, that the country faces. Donald Trump from being reelected or becoming Democrat is. Right. 
And, and of course, obviously, that, that wouldn't fit our goal. You know, I will say one thing, though, David, you know, when you look at what's about to happen here, this isn't a seat that then, you know, because a, a Trump or a MAGA person wins the primary becomes a toss up. Oh, God. Which no. <laughs> that is going to then go to that Republican candidate. Yes. And, and, and Harriet Hageman has embraced almost word to word what Trump has said. I mean, there's no daylight. I'll just play a couple of these kind of echoes because I think they're pretty powerful. And she's moved on this <laughs> rhetoric. In 2016, she was uh, Harriet Hageman sort of moved with her party. There's a miracle. That is the point of view. That is who would be heading for Wyoming to Capitol Hill. Right. All right. All of you, please stay with me because next, President Biden in the space of trying to seize that moment in what is just one of a string of legislative wins. Of course, there was the so-called CHIPS, the Semiconductor Domestic Production Bill that just passed. All of that's come for Biden and the Democratic Party just ahead of these November midterms. So my panel's back with me. So Nia, before Biden gets got this bill through, this is the modified Build Back Better that they call Inflation Reduction Act, although economists, I, I think, would, would beg to differ on that, right. certainly in the short term. But a CNN poll before this showed that 75% of Democratic voters wanted someone else to be signing this victory impact Biden's prospects in his own party. You know, I think it does. Two separate issues. One is because Democrats uh, don't support him at the same rate. I think he may be a 70, 80 key issues that Democrats care about around uh, climate uh, change, young voters. They won't necessarily be felt immediately by Americans, but I who down on Biden more generally. They see now a president and a party mm -hmm. that's able to get something done. So, Chris, the, the Republicans have counted this as a sure thing. I mean, how many times do you hear uh, threats coming from the likes of Jim Jordan about when they're in charge of committees, what they're going to do? Does any of this change the midterms? This, this Republicans thinking they had a sure thing. Does this I, I think it helps on the margins. Do I think it helps a lot? No, because I don't think the real well, how they experience their lives. And uh, for 26, it doesn't kick in not only not before this election, it doesn't kick in before the next election. And wow. then it's only yeah. for 10 drugs. Mm -hmm. And the $2,000 cap to lower drug prices, you are going to continue to experience nine cents. And I'm sitting there going, I am saving money here. <laughs> $3.89. <laughs> <laughs> so do I think it's going to have a dramatic impact? I'll tell you what I think may have a more dramatic impact for uh, the Democrats. Conversely, I think when Republicans are able to focus on Biden and not Trump, it's good for the Republicans. So the what about this? Trump right now is looking at this and all of his legal issues. And, and it seems to be just a matter of when. Not if, but when. I mean, those are his very words. Impact this if he jumps in before the November election. Well, the president, he does announce a pre midterm election day that that's me, the inflation, Biden, uh, which they think works for them the best right, this right is, now. But then it becomes a referendum and, on Trump. Exactly. And, and when, so all the, which could help, but it will undoubtedly motivate the left as well. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much to all on this election night. And next, the shocking number of just how much us, don't forget, you can watch Outfront anytime on CNN Go. AC 360 with Anderson begins now.